Hi, my name is Rose, and you're watching Blue Review. Good morning everyone, I'm Nolan Hay. And I'm Catherine Shafiq, and you're watching Blue Review. To begin this episode, we sat down with our new principal, Dr. Stone, and this is how it went. Uh, so far it's been really good, you know, despite not being able to see everybody's faces and get to know people just because, you know, we're not all able to be together. That's been the hardest part, but it's been great. Everybody's been very welcoming and the the students have been very good. Uh, it, they're, they're just really courteous, kind uh, people and the staff has been amazing. Ooh, if I weren't a principal, it would probably be something within the sports realm. I miss coaching. You know, I had a point where I could have been um, an assistant athletic director at Maid Creek or become an assistant principal. And I actually spoke to Mr. Tompkins, who was my principal at the time at Maid Creek. He gave me a little bit of guidance and I decided to go the assistant principal route. I really look forward to seeing all of the amazing things that the students are doing. One of the reasons why I love what I do is the students and looking at you guys and what your talents are is phenomenal at such a young age and knowing that you have your entire lives ahead of you and you have basically a clean slate to be able to pave your way and do what you want to do is extremely exciting for me and to be a small part of that like I, I i feel insignificant to that i look forward to seeing all the things that you guys get to do here that make yourselves proud your families proud us proud being part of that family that goes hey look what look what our school is doing looking to see you guys after graduation and all the great things you're doing and coming back and telling us about how your experience here has helped you to be where you're at. Those are the kinds of things that I really look forward to and being a small part in that. I had really good teachers. I played volleyball and um, I was a tennis player. I was an athlete. I played volleyball. I played varsity from my freshman year. And I remember uh, my coach, who was the one that encouraged me to come back into teaching and how she really encouraged me and saw something in me that I may not have saw in myself, just the confidence piece. And um, I remember winning district against Lamar High School. We were we had lost to them twice in regular season and then we wound up beating them for the district championship. I remember that was one of the highlights. I remember my senior year, I, I won the 5A state championship in tennis. And that helped me, you know, just going Forward. I had a scholarship to play at Arkansas, University of Arkansas, so I played tennis there. Those are the things that I remember the most and, and just being a part of something that, you know, we just kept, you know, being able to be successful in things. And I was in Greece my senior year too, so I did theater as well. My advice is to follow your dreams. Follow what you want to do. And I know that sounds kind of cliche, but be okay if what you set out to do isn't exactly your path. Because I spent a lot of time in some ways regretting some of the paths that I chose, but I feel like what I'm doing now kind of chose me because I never, that never was a goal of mine. It was always to be in radio and television and sports and those kinds of things. And I just found that, you know what, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. And you have to be okay with that. But it's okay to follow your dream. I picked up, moved to Nashville, partly for music, partly because there was a job waiting for me in television. And neither one of those things, well, I'm sort of doing music now, but those things were not what I thought it was going to be when I was younger. But you should still follow your dream and never give up if that's still what you want to do. But it's okay if your path changes and you have to be good with that. And that's kind of where I'm at. And now that I'm way older than y'all, I can see that. It's hard for you guys to see that now, but 
Always follow your dreams, no matter what. You only get one chance at it. You only get one life. You've got to do what your heart tells you to do. You got to do what you love to do and you got to, and you just got to continue to do it. Welcome to Blue Review Sports Talk. I hope you are all having a great day. Mustangs have a lot to cheer for as we head deeper into athletic season. Football has gone off to a very good start this year. We are undefeated so far, and there's a game this Friday against Tompkins at Legacy at 7.30. Volleyball has put in countless hours of hard work in this season. Come out and cheer them on this Friday at Taylor and Saturday at Cinco. We have swim meets every Thursday, and cross country has their next meet on October 31st. Now let's check out what a typical day is like for a KVA student compared for students here at the school. Here's some Blue Review KVA students. Thanks, Nolan. Due to the obvious pandemic, things are not what we're used to. We live in a very unique time. For better or for worse, times are changing. For the first time in history, we're presented with an opportunity to participate in school in a completely different way. KVA and face-to-face -face are two contrasting solutions to the same problem. We have the same classes, the same teachers, the same assignments, and yet our day-to-day -day school participation still differs. So here is the daily schedule of two Taylor students, one face-to-face -face and one KVA. Here's an unrealistic morning routine for a face-to-face -face student at Taylor High School. No one really wakes up at 5.30 in the morning and stretches when they initially wake up, but that's all right. Now, instead of wasting money on an $8 Starbucks drink, we make our own coffee before school starts. Even though we all want to go to school and what we slept in the night before, we still get dressed while being sure to wear our masks correctly every day. For the first five or so minutes of class, we act like we're listening to our teachers, then we're sure to take our much needed midday naps. And finally, we head home. Before going to class, I put on my makeup to make sure that I'm the prettiest girl on Zoom. Okay, you can stop now. I said stop. First, I start my school day by turning off my camera on Zoom and playing video games because there's no way the teacher's gonna notice. Then I do my classwork for the best class, Blue Review. This one. That's a 10 out of 10. During enrichment, I eat lunch and watch TV because there's no way in heck that I'm going to wait all the way to see lunch just to get some food. Then, when we have to take a test... No. No. No! Then, at the end of my school day, I go back to playing video games. I mean, I'm only human. If I know that I'm going to get away with something, then you know that I'm going to do it. Do you know why I called you in here today? No. Okay. I need help understanding this trend. In the hallways, I hear people talking about this game and where's an imposter and crewmates and people dying in electrical. What what does this all mean? Here, watch watch this. Among Us is an indie game from 2018 by Inner Sloth. The game blew up after their sister company released another episode to their ongoing visual novel slash choose your own adventure game, The Henry Stickman Collection. The game follows 10 astronauts, one or two of which is an imposter. 
The crewmates, or innocents, go around the ship completing maintenance tasks around the spaceship, planetary base, or company headquarters, while the imposters try and stop the crewmates from doing so. If a crewmate comes across a dead body, they can report it, and everyone votes someone they think is the imposter. The crewmates win if they complete all the tasks or throw out all the imposters, and the imposters win if there are the same amount of crewmates as imposters left. What does a freshman need to be successful in high school? So in general, I suggest that my freshmen create a space where they can study at home, both with time and actual physical space. It's helpful for you to have a corner somewhere in your house where this is the place that you do your work. And then look at your schedule every night and try to figure out, I know some days are different than others, but try to figure out Mondays I can sit down for my chunk of time on six to seven or Tuesdays it's four to whenever. Um, and really look at your schedule and block out your times to study and to do your homework because if you're just doing it willy-nilly, you're going to forget something. Can students finish high school with college credit? Yes, students can finish high school with college credit. They typically will take AP classes. You can take AP Human Geography as a freshman, and then each year there are more AP courses that are offered to you. And if you take the AP test and you do well enough on it, you can actually earn up to, depends on the class, um, but typically about three or so hours of college credit per test. What is your advice for incoming freshmen? Uh, the biggest piece of advice not study related that I have for freshmen is to get involved, right? There's so many different things on campus for all sorts of different interests and hobbies. Find some, pick one, um, get involved with it, go to homecoming at least once in the next four years, go to prom, hopefully your senior year. Not having those memories when you, when you leave will be You'll, you'll miss out of it. So get involved a little bit and... And, <laughs> and now we asked some non-math teachers some math questions. Quick, what's the quadratic formula? A squared plus B squared equals C No, squared. that's Pythagorean theorem. Uh, what's, what's the quadratic formula? I don't remember. Quick, what's the quadratic formula? <laughs> uh, e equals MC squared. No. Oh, uh, Quick, what's the quadratic formula? Who, what? X, X2? The quadratic? Quadratic formula. Uh, Quick, what's the quadratic formula? <laughs> I knew you were going to ask me that. Okay. X squared plus B squared equals C squared. No, that's, that's a Pythagorean theorem. That's what I get. <laughs> In the midst of a global pandemic, students have found themselves with an excessive amount of free time. We have all picked up new hobbies like bacon, playing board games, or learning new sports, but some students at Taylor High School have even started their own businesses. Let's take a look at some of these students. Hi, I'm Anthony, and I'm in 12th grade. I run two businesses. This that you see right now, this is my vintage reselling business. I call it Ant's Drip Trip, and then I just started another one that is gonna be a clothing brand based around stuffed animals and pockets. I chose vintage because there's a lot of interesting history surrounding these pieces. Like for example, some of these, like this one for example. This has been around since probably the 80s and it says right here, this one's been around since 1990s when it was made. So there's a lot of history around these pieces. I used to spend a lot of time. It used to be like five to six hours a week. And now since I have people doing most of the work for me. I spend around an hour or two just tying up loose ends. Um, so I used to just go to the thrift store and buy the stuff and resell it. But after a certain point, when I got, when my accounts got big enough, people just started selling me stuff. They'd, they'd message me and ask me to buy things in bulk. And that's how I source most of my stuff now. So here's our clothing brand. It's called Happy. I'm working with my friends Kevin and Danny on it. The whole concept is putting stuffed animals in pockets. I know that sounds kind of silly, but just wait till you see this in person. Hi, my name is Cream Barreau. I'm a senior here at Taylor, and I started my own earring business called Kareem's Jewelry. I got started summer 2019 as a simple like summer project. I had seen these pair of earrings on Urban Outfitters for like $20, and I was like, I can make that. So then I started looking into supplies and like jewelry wholesale sites, and I started buying a whole bunch of charms and um, 
like earring loops and I started making my own earrings to sell for $6 each on an Etsy website. It honestly depends on how many sales I have a week, but for like a busy week, I'll spend about maybe like two hours. It's really not that time consuming. Making the earrings itself are not that hard. Um, it's really like curating what designs I want to make and also like my social media, like that's probably more time consuming than making the earrings themselves. In June, I started donating half my profits to Black Lives Matter and The Bail Project. So since people started seeing that, they, I am, my sales have gone up a little bit and this week I actually have five sales to ship out. You should definitely support. It's a great cause. Hey y'all, I'm Henley Beiser, the student council president this year. Here's a quick video to show y'all what student council is all about. And here's a few updates for what's to come in the upcoming weeks. Don't forget to show your school spirit and dress up. Go Mustangs! Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed our first episode of Blue Review. You can tune in next time on November 17th.